All right, I'm going to talk about question 11 very quickly. What's the difference between, if you look at the graph here, what's the difference between question 11 and say question 10 or 1? What's the key difference? You have another three points. I have three points, that's the key difference. What else? George? Not necessarily given two intercepts on the extra. Not given two intercepts and I'm not given eight? Turning points. Turning points. So now we're looking at the situation where we can't just by inspection find two of the variables straight up. No. This will become simple for me. Um, because it's just combining two skills that we already know how to do. We're already very good at determining quadratic equations and we can already use simultaneous equations. That's all we're doing. We have two unknowns left. What are the two unknowns? I've changed mine to B and C just because I knew that X1 and X2 would confuse you. So I've left it as B and C for now. What are the two unknowns? A and C. A and C. How did I find B? I can see immediately that's one of my intercepts. So I've already filled in one of my intercepts. Now I've got how many unknowns left? How many points do I need to find two unknowns? Two. I need two known points to, un to solve two unknowns. So I can pick any point now to, to help me get this problem underway. Which point should I pick? Let x equal 2, let y equal 7. Now anywhere I see x in my equation I replace with 2, anywhere I see y I replace with 7. So 7 equals a, 2 minus 1, 2 minus c. 7 equals a times 1 times 2 minus c. When I'm doing simultaneous equations, I can get rid of that times 1. So I've just got a times 2 minus c. When I'm doing my simultaneous equations, what's the goal? What do I need to do when I'm using elimination? Oh, sorry, elimination, substitution. What's my next line going to look like? What does this word mean? We should have heard it a few times. Isolate. Isolate, get it by itself. So I want an, a variable by itself on one side of the equation, correct? Yes. Which variable is clearly the easiest to get by itself in this scenario? A. a. How would I get A by itself? Y by side by 2 minus C, correct? Yeah. And A is by itself. I'm going to call that 1 or whatever I want, doesn't matter what I call it. What's my next step going to be? I'll do it over here, running out of room. Let So I've used this point, I can't use that anymore, I have to now use this point. And I also know that A equals 7 minus 7 over 2 minus C. So now I write Y, sorry not Y, Y, 2 equals 7 over 2 minus C times negative 1 minus 1. So negative 2 at the time. It is negative 2, thank you. Uh, negative uh, 2, no, it's not negative 2. Negative 1 minus C. Where'd the A go? Just A equals that, doesn't it? Yeah. That's my last line working. A equals that. So I've just replaced A with 2 minus C. How many variables do I have in this equation now? It's gross, but I've only got one. What's my variable? C. C. So I've got 7 times 2 times one, negative 1 minus C over 2 minus C equals negative 2. What can I write 7 times 2 as? 14. 
And if our algebra wasn't great and we were a little bit stuck on how we should rearrange it, does anyone know what the next step should be? What's the problem? James? The variables on the denominator. We have a variable in the denominator, we need to get rid of that, correct? How do we get rid of the variable in the denominator? Multiply. Multiply both sides by? 2 minus c, correct? Am I good if I leave that there for you? Do you reckon you can solve that from there? Yes. If you're going to find a c value, you've got to expand that in, and find a c value, and then use that to find your a value. Clear? They take a bit of time, but it's just simultaneous equations. I'll leave some time because I don't want to talk too much. It's a lot to take in. Write that down if you get stuck. Ask for help.